Hello and welcome back to another episode of Green Hill Today. I'm your co-host, Lane Herbert. And I'm Paige Dingra. And to start off today's episode, we have a couple of campus updates for you. On Wednesday, October 14th, sophomores and juniors took the PSAT on campus while seniors got to fulfill a long-awaited tradition of painting the water tower. Today, we have a special segment for you featuring an interdisciplinary project led by Regina Yunker, who is a science teacher in lower school. So let's go to the interview. So um, could you please give a little more context on what project your kids are doing? Yes, so my kids just wrapped up, my second grade students just wrapped up an extended study on George Washington Carver. Um, the reason why I chose him is because I have a um, collection of, of different science lessons about various famous scientists. And I always felt like George Washington Carver in the past has gotten kind of short shrift. Um, people think he's just this guy who invented peanut butter. And so a couple of years ago, I started reading about him. And in my spare time, I started reading some biographies about him. And he was really a complex person. Um, and really a strong role model, I think, because um, he was born during a time, um, you know, he was born during slavery, and he was um, kind of living during the Jim Crow era, and he had a, just a really complex life. Can you give me some, I guess, some specific examples of things that your students have done in this study? So we did a a basic experiment where we had just like we had lima beans. And again, I want them to, so they're second graders. So they're learning about various experiments and how you only change one variable at a time. So we talked about Carver and how he did various things with plants and how careful he had to be. Um, and so they decided on a simple experiment. It was like, okay, we have, we have these seeds. We want them to germinate how could we set up a simple experiment? So we talked about conditions changing only one variable. Would it be sunlight? Would it be the amount of water? Would it be about, would it be the medium that we were growing the seeds in? So they kind of created um, a simple experiment based on light and dark. And we talked about, you know, just changing one variable. We've done kind of also various um, studies outside looking at different types of leaves and um, different types of the trees and their different kinds of leaves in terms of looking at biodiversity because Carver liked, he was a collector. And so he collected all sorts of information about plants, trees, you know, just everything, um, rocks, insects, everything in nature was of interest to him. What sort of extra benefits do you think comes from this kind of interdisciplinary approach where you're we're not just talking about the science, but you're really coming from, from, a, from a, both the history and the science standpoint. Do you think that adds any benefits to their experience? Yeah, because I think that, um, well, one thing, I just think that um, looking at George Washington Carver is, well, I think that looking at just various scientists from historical standpoints and modern scientists is critically important. Um, Carver had this saying, um, and it was in one of the, the books that we read, um, no science, science is the truth, the truth shall set you free. I feel like just knowing science, looking at things from a factual kind of standpoint, you can relate that to so many different parts of your life. And what... Um... How do you think the kids do with this project? Like, did it go as planned or were there any surprises? So the first time when we set up our experiment, um, I, because like the students in the classroom in person, I've always, I, you know, I've, I've done various plant experiments before, but trying to create like a mini setup where they aren't sh uh, touching shared materials, um, I had this brilliant, I thought at the time idea that um, I would just have the students kind of water a plant with um, rather than like passing out like a ton of, you know, individual waters to like 16 kids or 15 kids. 
um, and in giving each person like a pot and like, you know, a bean or whatever, or a bag. And I thought I would just like, oh, okay, I'll give everybody just like an ice cube. And it's like this, you know, so it'll be this, this finite amount of water and that way they can touch everything and they'll, they're, you know, it'll also be like a, a wonderful learning point about how like, you know, ice melts, it's yada, yada. Well, anyway, it didn't work. All of our plants at first rotted. So again, we um, talked about Carver and how like, all oh, right, you know, his stuff probably failed multiple times as well. Learn from it. Ms. Junker learned from it, you know, science. You know, okay. You know, we need to like very carefully, like I made sure I measured the amount, like how big the ice cubes were, but I should have thought more about how much water, you know, that would actually, you know, it would actually be. Um, you know, once, once it turned to water, like how, uh, <laughs> how much was that going to be for the plant? So it was like a talking point. We failed. So we had to redo the experiment and like measure, you know, our water very carefully, etc. cetera. Um, and it worked beautifully. That's all we have for you today on this episode of Greenhill Today. As always, thank you all for tuning in. And we'll see you next time on Greenhill Today.